Meditation Requires Inspiration and Creativity by the Venerable Renzo. I have said that meditation is the road to enlightenment and the greatest endeavour of this life. If you want to attain enlightenment, you must practice meditation. Without enlightenment, one is like a lower level creature, an unawakened being is at a very low level. They live under their own limited realm, attached to immediate gains and pleasures with a narrow perspective. Whenever I talk about meditation to my students, I always stress the necessity of practicing it with resolute discipline and one-pointed devotion. That's why sometimes we can't meditate well. We lack resolute discipline, right posture or precise method. If your mind starts to run away after chanting a few mantras, it shows you lack discipline and devotion. Devotion makes it less likely for your mind to run away or feel drowsy. Our drowsiness is because we don't value the practice. We slack off or we lack devotion. At the same time, I always tell them how important it is to do it in as inspired and as richly creative a way as possible. During meditation, I can guide you, but you also need to have inspiration. Without inspiration, even if I guide you, you won't realize it. Although I give teachings like this every day, if you are not inspired, you won't have much realization. Meditation requires inspiration and creativity. Creativity means eliminating your attachments, putting the methods I taught you into practice, and mastering this kind of meditation through practice. It requires continuous experimentation. For example, if you practice shooting, after I share the right method with you, you can start practicing. During the practice, you should have your inspiration and creativity. And gradually, you will master the tips to the extent that you don't even need the method. You will find a way to quickly and consistently aim at the target in the shortest time. Additionally, to maintain the stability of your body, you can also gradually explore and discover the fastest and most accurate method on your own. No matter what you do, you should be richly creative and inspired, especially in meditation, as it cultivates wisdom. In one sense, meditation is an art, and you should bring it to an artist's delight and fertility of invention. Without this kind of meditation, how can you cultivate wisdom? In regard to meditation, I have taught you the method of inner fire meditation. The method is just a catalyst. You should try to infuse it with your inspiration and creativity. Take your time to experience this method. How does the lower abdomen heat up? How does the heat radiate outward? How does it spread to the whole body? You need inspiration. If your body can't get that feeling, you need to continuously adjust your breathing and body to get the feeling of inner fire. Just like the video we've watched of a man creating fire on an island by friction, he tried many methods and finally succeeded. We've all heard of creating fire by friction, but actually practicing it and making it is quite challenging. It took him a long time, and finally he gradually figured it out, got inspired, and eventually found the right method. 
You need to think step by step, pondering how to ignite the fire while doing it. No matter what you do, you should have inspiration. Inspiration and creativity are so important. Don't be rigid and inflexible. What I've taught you is just a method. While the method leads you to flexibly learn through practice and then master it, if you truly master it, it becomes the right method. What I've taught is just a knowledge which conveys the right process to you. Usually, when you are engaging in the actual practice, I will also guide you where to exert a little more effort, when to pay attention to certain key points. These are tips. Only when you come to consult me after actual practice will I share further experiences with you. Because if you haven't even started the basic practice, it would be useless to share advanced tips with you. So, you need to engage in actual practice. If you consult me after actually starting your practice, I will know. Oh, you've truly practiced. You've entered a certain state and you've reached a certain point. Then I will tell you what you should pay attention to in the next step and how to carry out the practice. If you haven't even started practicing, which is the case for many people, it would be useless to share advanced theories with you. That will be just repeating and won't bring about much effect, even if you listen. Therefore, you must engage in actual practice. You should practice meditation. Otherwise, what I teach will be useless and become a kind of knowledge for you, rather than genuine understanding that can be applied into practice. It would be merely intellectual. Even if you know and remember it, it doesn't mean you know how to use it or that you can apply it practically. Don't just acquire knowledge without putting it into action. Meditation is an art. Art is characterized by creativity and inspiration. Here it says you should bring it to fertility of invention. Become as resourceful in inspiring yourself to enter your own peace as you are at being neurotic and competitive in the world. You need to enter that state, inspire yourself and find the most suitable state as we are following the middle way. You need to adjust your balance at any time. A slight slip could make you lose your balance so we should be highly alert, yet still aware of relaxing. Without relaxation, you won't enter the right state. Being alert while remaining relaxed, this is the way of successful practitioners. When we first start, we are all alert, but we can't relax because it's hard to maintain the balance. When you are able to maintain the balance, you will naturally relax. So, all of this needs to be gradually cultivated in actual practice. There is no shortcut. It's all about practicing consistently on your own.